Welcome to the uh, Galton Underground. We are very happy to be here. Uh, we are something in the anything, and we're going to play a few tunes for you.
Wow. You guys are like a, I don't know, a long, slow drive on a Sunday with like these like nice winding, slow curves. And then there's a couple like hairpins in there. Yeah. And then like, it's cool. It's cool because even though you're going up and down these hairpin turns, you can still get a mellow out at the bottom. Ease in for the nice finish. That was a fucking musical journey. That was that was that incredible. Was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, this is the Gallatin Underground Show. Uh, my name is Vince Palafox. This is Aaron Redfire. What's up? We, today we are interviewing uh, something in the anything, <clears throat> and there's a lot of somethings and a lot of anything's in there. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll stop talking about myself here and let the guys introduce themselves and talk about their gear a little bit. So uh, whoever wants to start first, just introduce yourself and tell the audience a little bit about uh, what what you got going on. All right. I'm uh, Nathan Bennett. I play bass. I've been playing bass for about six years. Before that, I played piano for about seven years. <coughs> and I'm playing through a five-string custom carbon right here. She's my baby. And uh, I got a, a pedal board with a few pedals to make me sound all weird. And uh, then I got a PV-15 behind me, as well as a hard key 410 with a Gens Benz head. Sweet. All right. Um, my name is Chris Cowan. I play the guitar. Um, and uh, I got a GNL. Uh, I forget what they're called, but it's like a... It's like a Stratocaster, basically, and it's real nice. I love it. And then uh, I got a pedal board with a couple overdrives and some delay and reverb and some fun stuff to make my tone sound cool. And then I got a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe back there. And uh, yeah, that's about all I got. I like to play the strings. Uh, my name's uh, Justin D. Teen. I'm the drummer. I got uh, an old vintage Pearl 70s snare drum I found at a garage sale. And I got another <laughs> 1970s uh, ride cymbal there. That was my first purchase off the internet. Uh, I got a couple borrowed cymbals because I break them. And a, a stack made of my broken cymbals. Nice. <laughs> and then I do have a, a K custom dark hi-hat that's sweet <laughs> <laughs> um and then professor anything ride shotgun on the front of my kit also the singer of the band yeah ah. um he's our mascot and yeah chris met him i'll uh he, he rode with chris here so i'll yeah. let chris introduce him met him at a fish show and <laughs> <laughs> he came back met him at the gorge and uh and then we went to Curveball together, but that festival got canceled, which was a bummer. So we got deep down in the mud, and he came back and joined the band. He's a singer now. Damn. It's too bad he can't talk anymore except for that sound, but... Yeah. You can do this one, too. <laughs> he's got a few in his sleeve. That's oh, almost sounds like he's upset when you do that. <laughs> his, his eyes are duct taped. He's always upset. No, n nobody's <laughs> ever happy with the deep throat. Oh, <laughs> he's committed. <laughs> well, at least he's committed. <clears throat> so, how long have you guys been a band? We've been twenty like, years. We've been playing. We've been playing like gigs for about like a year and a month. Oh, basically that's incredible. around this time last year we started like i think our first we first one was like a hoff like wednesday open mic did yeah. like a like an hour set or something and i think that was march 2018 yeah cool. and then we just started playing gigs here mm. and there so did a bunch of red tractor ones which were fun yeah we're a little a little loud for that space <laughs> yeah it, it is a smaller space but it's really cool that they entertain live music yeah. oh yeah for yeah. sure yeah. definitely yeah and we we've gone back with a smaller version of ourselves before yeah. oh, cool. this lighter. Yeah, Nate Nate uh, actually met Chris in uh, a kitchen. So uh, yeah. a little little uh, advice for those looking for good musicians around is look in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's part of the story, how you guys met. Like, how, how, how'd the band get formed? Well, I started living with Justin in the space that we're here about two and a half years ago. 
Um, and I knew him through a mutual friend that I actually moved here with from Chicago, who's been my best friend since like 10 years old. So, and then I kind of met Justin, he was playing drums. And then I uh, was a sous chef at a restaurant called Saffron Table. Cool. And Chris was the dishwasher slash prep cook. Originally a dishwasher. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he would always comment on what like I put on the stereo for the music. And, I, and he was like, oh, I play guitar. And then we started jamming for about like four or five months. He was in and out of town for a while. So it wasn't anything serious. But I think like January or February of 2018, we like got together and we're just like, all right, let's play some music to like play out to the people yeah it was like the last time i came That's back cool. from california yeah i decided to stick around and start the band yeah then we started doing gigs right on so uh, a kind of off the wall question but like you know you said you you met him in the kitchen and you know you're the dishwasher right mm -hmm. and uh so like when he's like oh yeah i play guitar what what were you what were you thinking honestly it wasn't even him who told me that his older brother also worked there and uh, we kind of bonded. I mean, we both had like really long dreadlocks and listened to the same music. So we were like, <laughs> Oh, you kind of knew what you were into. Yeah, like, like we were jiving right, yeah, together. Yeah. And yeah. like, it wasn't just one of those, like, Yeah, dude, I, I jam. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, yeah, 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 I guess I can kind of play. <laughs> yeah. No, so I kind of knew what we were getting into. And Justin and I, we, uh, we had an old guitar player for a project we called Over Easy. And he recently left uh, to travel the world. He was in India for a while and a bunch of other uh, countries. And so we were just like, all right, we really need like a guitar player because we kind of want to take this to like the next level. We want to tour. We want to like be a band. Yeah. And so Pat, which is Chris's older brother, was like, oh, you got to play with Chris. You got to play with Chris. And I was like, all right. And so he came over and then... I guess the rest is history. <laughs> Super cool. Or our history, I guess. And the guy who left is back now and has a cool band, right? Yeah. yeah. The, Nightcaps. the Nightcaps. Yeah. The Nightcaps. They're sick. I haven't got Check to see out. those guys. I just seen, seen their out. name Highly the recommend it. They're amazing. Highly yeah, where did they just people. last play? It was uh, it was here in town with... Uh, yeah, Valhalla, I think, was yeah. the last show. Yeah. yeah. That, I fucking missed that. I had a ton of fun. The, open, the, the end of the set turned into like somewhat of an open mic with everybody chiming in on Deborah by Beck and then yeah. there's like some freestyling and some African drums. It was it was it was great. Those guys are amazing. That's yeah. that's really cool. So, so so you guys said that you wanted to like uh go on tour and stuff. Uh have you guys thought entertained that idea or, or are going uh, too soon? We've played a little bit of shows out of town. Um and we've definitely mulled over the ideas of like connecting tours together. Yeah, yeah, we're we're trying to get that going for sure. Yeah, Sweet. we played. Oh, we know not Billings yet. We played uh, Missoula. We've played Livingston a few times. Um, I don't know. We're trying to like perfect our craft before we really go out to the world. And I mean, we all kind of have like full time jobs here, so we're kind of trying sure. to like study the line between having a job and making a living between being a successful musician. But cool. we kind of think after the summer we're gonna try to. Try to take it. We got some leads on out of town places that we can go and actually do a real tour. Yeah. Where right. do you think you'd go for that? Uh, we got some connections in Colorado, California, Wyoming. Um, I don't know if you guys know Ben Morris. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we know Ben. Yeah. He is uh, promotes the Zebra. He's from Dash. He's a good buddy of ours. And yeah, super cool dude. Yeah. We played with uh, Dash, and it's been a lot of fun. He... He actually just talked to us and he really wants us to go on tour and he's got like a lot of connections. With, with Dash? Uh, Tentatively? Yeah, some oh. some with Dash. I don't know anything not. about any of this. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> News to me. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he actually contacted me uh, yesterday or the day before and he's he's really into it. So. Well, I hope that I hope that works out for you guys. Yeah. Uh, Aside from all that, there's also just so many surrounding towns with music venues in them that we can do like short like kind of weekend warrior style tours to sure. like you know just the surrounding montana towns and then even down to like jackson or idaho and stuff like that and just that like you know yeah like expand the, the circle a lot you know that, that's yeah. within like I, I guess our range here probably a six to eight hour driver yeah maybe for 10 sure if you guys really wanted to go <laughs> it's not like the worst driving though you know what i mean no, it's like no, it's long sure. hours but it's just like 
It's not you're just bad. hanging out with friends and listening to music anyway. Yep. Exactly. So and and we're not in a rush, honestly. We're we're like here to stay and like build a fan base, build some music. We got about three to four hours of worth of material and we're really trying to pump that up a little bit and really kind wow. of explore. Numbers up. <laughs> yeah, three to four hours, that's quite a bit, you know. I uh that you can definitely yeah. put on a pretty good show yeah, and four. if you got that yeah. much material, I mean. Yeah. Uh wow. Um so you you know you guys play a lot of places around town. Yeah. What what's your what are some of your favorite places to play? <laughs> the Zebra. Uh, Honestly, we just had our, our last kind of uh, our last Zebra show on the nineteenth, which was Bicycle Day, which was very fitting for us, mm-hmm. and we all had a lot of fun, and it was one of our best shows, I think. That's really cool. And uh, it was. There was like a time where we were playing like halfway through the show and I was just like reminiscing of all the times that we've played (laughs) at the Zebra. I don't think we played anywhere else more than the Zebra. Definitely not. Yeah. Hoff is close. Yeah. But like that's open mics and such and... But like actually, you know, I don't, I not, not to like take away from playing other places, but I don't think just because you're playing an open mic takes away from the show at all. Yeah. 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 No, we've had some pretty raging ones on, on Wednesday. Like there's been some open mics. It's, it's a legit show. Yeah. Like, yeah, people are dancing. There's people all over and yeah, I I, I think it's always exciting when the crowd gets into it too. Yeah. Good people there at the Hofbrau for sure. Hoff open mic is like the best. (laughs) (laughs) So So how do you guys, three uh, times a week or something like that? How do you guys feel about the zebra closing? Like, what is that? How does that affect the Bozeman music scene? It's kind of like... It bums me out. (laughs) It's a bummer because it is a place where, like, a lot of us can go and, like, kind of work on our material. And it's not necessarily, like, you know, a super big, like, cash money deal or anything. But you can, like... It's somewhere where where we can, like, play and, like, develop our style. And, like, so many... We've partied down there so many times and like for other people's shows and it's just like there was a community of just like people having shows somewhere yeah. outside of the Hofbrau where we could like all play shows, you know what yeah. I mean? Right. And like the filling the filling station has that for sure, but there's like a lot of touring there's touring stuff that goes through the zebra too, but you know what I mean? Like Yeah. It was pretty uh, open schedule for locals. I, I think the filling station is great for uh local bands, uh yeah. more more so in the winter, you know, when there's a lot less uh bigger acts, but yeah, I think you're right. You know, it, yeah. absolutely. It was definitely a, a place that did kind of let, let a lot of bands come in. and that For were, sure. And that yeah. kind of helped us like really kind of refine our stage sound a little bit. Cause like, well, the Hofbrau is awesome and stuff, but you get a sound, uh, somebody to mix sound and monitors and stuff at the zebra. So it was like a, a little bit of a different feel and it kind of helped us develop in a new direction past just playing out live, you know? Right. I think that, you know, until you hear yourself through those monitors on the stage you you don't really like have a full understanding of what the band sounds like because you know maybe you as the drummer you're kind of stuck behind your wall of drums and everything's blasting you in the face and you can hear the guitar if it's pointed at you just the right direction but then (laughs) maybe the bass player can't and the bass player's in the same boat and he's like man i can totally hear that guitar because it's pointing right in my ears but my bass is always drowned it out and yeah (laughs) yeah no especially with the with the jam band it definitely helps to have a clear picture of what everybody's doing because everybody definitely relies on each other for creativity, you know, so it's a little bit difficult sometimes um, when you can't hear the band in that way. So it definitely helped us develop our sound in that direction. Cool. Yeah, when you go unscripted, you got to be able to hear it for sure. <laughs> Speaking of unscripted, um, you know, I, our band, uh, Liquid Colors, played with you. Yeah, yeah, that was and, fun. And uh, that, was, that was super cool. Uh, September 6th. I don't remember that. There's actually oh, a poster the on the wall. <laughs> Here it is. I, I remember the mac and cheese, man. Mac no. and cheese, man. Uh, uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> uh, it was good mac and cheese. It was awesome. Uh, but, yeah, no, um, we uh, we played you guys, with you guys, and, you know, I, I kind of like to – think that i remember like the band sound and their songs and stuff and i had a blast with you guys but then i heard you guys another night at down at the zebra as well and uh i i was like waiting for like the band to start and i was just kind of sitting at the bar and i was like listening to the music and i was like huh well pretty soon the band's gonna start and and i was like oh holy shit this is the band and it they are playing i was like oh fuck i don't recognize any of these songs and then i was like wait a minute do you guys do you guys just always play like different songs or like different <laughs> versions of the same song or, or, or what, what's the story behind that? So we really like to explore our music. We do a lot of sandwiches, songs within songs. We've actually inverted <laughs> some of our songs as well, but we are all about jamming and improvising and keeping it fresh. So we do definitely have like a core 
sound and core songs that we have, but we like to embellish kind of, on them. Yeah. And depending on how each and every one of us is feeling depends on kind of where the show goes. And that's why I kind of think that we have people coming back to our shows every time because it's something new every time. Like we Ooh. just we just played a band with uh, played a show at the Zebra with Bear Spray. And those guys are awesome. I love Bear really Spray. Good. Carl's like my personal bass hero, and, <laughs> I, and I love Bear Spray. But uh, they're they're definitely like a heavier band than yeah. we are. And yeah, so, a little bit, sure. Yeah, so going into that show, like we were all kind of thinking a little heavier, and like by the end of the show, we were definitely like <laughs> a lot heavier, and it, it just felt really good to kind of like transition on yeah, the fly. Yeah, to, to feel like what the crowd wants and to, because like, it's like a communication when you're playing a show, you like, you're giving the crowd and the crowd is giving back and you gotta it's like a give it's like feedback. Take. Right. Yeah. Like, you're probably not gonna play punk rock at the Hot Springs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. I think <laughs> we, did. we did probably do yes. that. We played out there when it was negative two degrees. Yeah. That's super cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the coolest I've ever played for sure. But yeah, I guess uh, another th thing with the the shows being different is like there's there's structure that we like write out to these songs. So there's like written songs, but like we have areas in them that can be expanded upon, and that's kind of where like the magic happens, I guess. Cool. And if we get really excited during that part, when we come back into a composed section, we'll come back into it with like a little bit of a different fury than maybe if you just started on it. Sure. You know what I mean? Because you're like you're just all stoked and like it right. puts you in like this mind state that's like a different zone. You know what I mean? Like you're Definitely like, sure. You're kind, just you kind of it. built built up to it in a way you weren't expecting, but you're like, yeah, oh, here we go. It's exciting. Oh, sorry guys, it's just like <laughs> ten beats per minute faster. I'm sure you can keep up. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah, like yeah. That, exactly. Right? Yeah. Just stuff like that, like little variations. So there is a, a good bit of structure that we do write into it. Uh, absolutely, but it keeps us interested because I feel like all of us would get bored if we just walked into the same venue, played the same songs. And we just get tired of it, kind of. Sure. I mean, you guys are all <laughs> as with the listener. So. <laughs> so, uh, there's lots of different uh, arrangements of your songs, right? Like just variations of it. Absolutely. Uh, you, you mostly you play at the zebra a lot, so you probably get like that CD afterwards. Yeah. Aren't you so fucking jazzed to listen to that? Like right after, like you <laughs> yeah, feel like you performed sure. great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and we put a lot of those shows on our SoundCloud and Bandcamp. At oh, least, nice. At wow, least, cool. at least the shows that we feel like are. Are, uh, warranted. <laughs> right. Maybe the, maybe not the ones that I was feeding you mac and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean we have plenty of those types of of uh, audio recordings too. We're talking about doing kind of an archival thing because like it's not so much about how good you are, but like there's a lot to be said in the progression of the band too. So I mean, even if it's not all flawless or whatever, it's still nice to to be able to hear all of those. And so we do have plenty of those shows online that are like. Maybe we didn't feel the greatest about or whatever, but there's definitely nuggets in all of them that are. Yeah, there's still a lot of fun, stuff. and yeah, you can like yeah. you can hear no, that they're really a good time. Cool. Good time, Keep it you for know. Posterity, uh, yeah. And you know, not to mention, you, you know, like you said, if it would maybe be a little bit different if you guys were playing the exact same song every time, maybe you wouldn't feel quite the same way. But maybe your your uh, your opinion on it is more like based on how much different it is every time that you hmm. just kind of want to remember like that particular night. Yeah, definitely, for sure. You can like you can feel the energy in the recordings, for sure. And yeah. there's definitely times where we actually record our practices with that mic over there, and oh, we cool. listen to them after, and we're just like, we like what we did there, we don't like what we did there, and we kind of learn from what we did. Oh, so you can kind of just like you know Gage. progress as you go. Especially in our early development, we did that a lot with before we actually had that mic or anything. We would just do like a cell phone recording, and we would actually we don't do it as much anymore. Um, but in our earlier ones, when we were trying to develop the songs, we'd listen to them like every practice. We'd listen to the practice afterwards. Oh, right. Yeah. And uh, definitely aided in our writing process. No, I, I definitely take the same, same approach, especially when I'm writing a new song. I'll, I'll, I'll write it and I'll get to the point where I try to can play it and sing it, you know, if that's what's going to be the thing. Uh -huh. and, and then I'll, I'll record it on probably a cell phone again, oh. just something simple. And I'll, I'll listen to it probably about a dozen times. I'm like, yeah, okay, now I have an idea of what I want. And then like a week later, I'll kind of come back to it and just take it fresh, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how does the songwriting happen? Because like I, I get the vibe that you guys are like just so like in tune with each other. You're able to just like improvise like very, very well. So Chris and I definitely have different writing styles. 
And uh, so I have my songs that I have been de developing for years. What you just heard, Nate's song, <laughs> which is funny because that one's written by Nate. <laughs> okay. That was the first song I, I wrote. wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> that was the first song He's I wrote love interest. years ago. <laughs> so I wrote that years ago before I even had a band. And when I shared it with them, like in our notebook of songs, it was written Nate's song because <laughs> it was the first song that I ever wrote. <laughs> and then eventually, after years, it became Nate's song. And so I'm not a drum player. I'm not a, a guitar player by any means. So I come to these guys with ideas of riffs and how I kind of want the song to move. And then with months of playing it, it kind of develops into a song realistically. Okay. So what you just heard, like what my version was, was so, so very different than... Do you remember how you used to play it? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't want to replicate it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And that, that's kind of how our music happens. It evolves. And I don't want to speak for Chris, but I know even with Chris's tunes, he brings to us and Justin will lay down a weird fucking beat and it'll come out and then it'll just push it to a different or I'll throw a bass line or he'll even improvise af like over it and then all of a sudden it's completely different sure so. yeah for sure like i could i can think of uh so like batuti is a similar one for me where i came up with the riffs before i knew these guys and then uh it just sort of came together and I, I know there's a second that song has like two halves kind of in the second half of it there's a bass line towards the end of it that nate just kind of started doing and i ended up like the original way it was is written for two guitars and it had different chords for each guitars that overlapped to make like big chords okay and uh and so like, but since we only have like one guitar, I was like, started doing this, like he started switching between them. And so I started following it and it became a whole new like riff that was like not in the song originally. So in that way, it was like a very collaborative moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it, so it, it started from the framework of like original ideas for me then we come together and it like all becomes a collage of all of our influences. <laughs> That's really cool. And you just kind of get to do whatever you want every time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he keeps us all together. Sometimes we tell him what to do. Ah. But, but I mean, you're very on point. And you're like, I mean, I, I know like, oh, all he has to do is keep time. But dude, That's bullshit. you're fucking killing it. Like, I mean, like, I got to awesome. run the chicken too. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just living with Justin, I've known like from just practicing and playing, he'll jump on the drums and like i'm playing four four and then he switches to three four and then it's just like oh that's a completely different riff and then it's like oh that's a different part of the song and then it's just like so it really is so a collaborative when, when he's when he's playing four four and then he switches to three four do you still stay in four four and just catch it on the 12th or no i usually switch right off the, yeah like you know right now uh, like, usually yeah. after the first measure oh, we do okay. have a polyrhythmic section we're writing in one of them it's definitely not <laughs> okay we, not we've been yet. playing for so oh, long yeah. that i can i can i know what he's gonna do before he does it it's, it's kind of <laughs> ridiculous where he'll do a fill and i'm like no he's gonna drop into something most but, time signature changes i think are written though yeah definitely. i don't think we have a lot of time signature change within jams no yeah well, it, it maybe be, has happened i mean i'm not i'm not saying it hasn't happen, happened yeah that's that's impressive I, I know that we definitely have a bunch of hand signals that we'll do on stage to kind of like <laughs> <laughs> tell each other what we're about to do i feel like we've Which, used them less recently we have it's more of looks and feel yeah yeah. yeah but yeah. we we definitely started out with having like six or seven different hand signals where we're trying to go with the jam or where we're trying to peak and go to the next like composed section lately we've been focusing on synchronistic dance moves Oh really? <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait for the video. Yeah. yeah. Hey, oh, the audience will be able to see this because this is a podcast. But show me one of those moves. <laughs> the secret hand signals. The, okay, so uh, there's there's this one means like since no one can see it, it's all good. So like we'll, we'll never reveal this quite to the <laughs> well, we'll know, but so, like, we won't reveal. So it. like that, or if you like, you could try to do it like close to the thing or whatever. Uh, that right. means like. Uh, that means that you're going to like if the jam has been kind of like peaking and like finding valleys or whatever, and you think it's just kind of like getting in a cyclical, like kind of boring thing. Okay. You can be like, 
let's like it's like agreeing to move on but not like quite yet so it means like it basically means peak slow it down it means like, like it actually means like peak it up maybe one more time uh, okay it means like peak well, it up okay crescendo and out yeah crescendo and out actually and then we do an upside down one for uh we call that the anti-peak. 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 We kind, of <laughs> kind of slow it down. I can't and wait of... for the next coming of the anti-peak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, then uh, we got uh, four on the floor, which is just the fist. And okay, like we the just, uns. yeah. So the uns, the people love to dance. Okay. And we like to give it to them. I love them. to dance. Um, we got this, which, is, which means space. Oh, yeah. Um, that. And that means we kind of just get like, lost in the flow. Yeah, like, yeah. we kind of lose the time signature. We kind of feel just it all out. A bit. Just get yeah. spacey. Get a little bit. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's cool. That is yeah. fucking rad. You guys like <laughs> usually plan they for that. <laughs> point their their headstocks at me in a certain direction and want me to move. Yeah, we yeah. do uh, speed up or <laughs> slow down. Okay, and yeah, yeah, yeah. almost on, like a boater. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite sure if you could see with Nate's song, but for a lot of our ch those changes, we were looking at each other. Uh, so, no, I, uh, I was lost in the mix, man. I was just like, listening. Yeah. seriously, yeah. I was like, just kind of flowing with the groove, and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. And then, like, even halfway through, not to embarrass you, Aaron, but like, totally like thought it was the end of the song, and we were all like ready, and like, I even like shifted my mic, and I'm like, oh shit, no, no, it's not that. <laughs> 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 but it, oh, it was super cool. I was like, fucking. One transition after another, it's such a smooth flow. Uh, I think you guys are very, very well balanced in like the transitioning of your songs. You know, you, you they're thought out. It's not like a just like okay, let's do this right here, let's do this right there. They're they're not hard stops. They're they're really they they really flow. So you know, speaking of flowing, what's what's next? You guys want to do a brand new one and do this eras? I think we should be. We do should I do Patootie? Patootie, because you mentioned it yeah, earlier. Yeah, I okay. like should give him a little Patootie, listen. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so, sweet. This was the one that Chris was talking about where he wrote the chord progressions. Like a long time ago, and there's there's stuff from uh, yeah previously in my life, and then it kind of came together as a song with these guys. Nice. So this is Batuti, written by Chris Cowan on the guitar over there. <laughs>
Wow. God damn, you guys. That was so fucking cool. That was like, I, I just got to say, you guys are like magical. Like magical, <laughs> magical maybe uh, fucking musical storytellers. No, definitely musical storytellers. That's, that's what you like, got to go you, for. You brought me on band, like a know? journey. I don't know what uh, that's we're anybody going for. else is yeah. thinking about, but I was like thinking about like this guy that goes onto a submarine. <laughs> and then like it goes deep down and then the submarine has to battle like a giant anglerfish <laughs> or something like that and then like he gets to atlantis or something <laughs> yeah he's really chill once he's down there that yeah. second half's like atlantis or whatever yeah <laughs> dude chris just talked to me about this there's like uh the 10 commandments of Derek trucks and uh oh, and we've yeah. been reading up I on that lately yeah but one yeah, of them is no. about trying to tell a story with your solos. Yep. Yeah. And, okay. and bringing your emotion into it and having that feeling yeah. and like more I than go solos, to that, like, just the music, like br- yeah. like telling a story in and his bringing things, a specific emotion. It was specifically emotion. about jamming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, he was. Yeah, he was just saying like he's like create an emotion like inside of yourself and then like try to express that specifically like tell have a story to tell like bring something that's like inside of you and like bring it out for people. Or whatever. And I try to like think about that while I'm doing it because it's like you can kind of like, and I don't always like go, by, like I'll noodle around, you know what I mean, and not really know what I'm doing, but it's good to like have some sort of emotional direction in what you're doing. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think the, the cool part about at least the second half of that song is that like it's leading up to something, and then the final chord is E, and we keep on hitting that, uh, what is it, E flat, F sharp? It's a, there's a, there's like a F major seven, yeah. which kind of, I don't know why, but it can like, I'm going to sound stupid right now. It's going to, it's, it can like resolve to a, like a E, E major. So like the most of the songs in C sharp minor, which is the relative minor of E major, yeah. but it like kind of dances around like making, like subconsciously making you want to go to the E and we don't hit it till the very end. So that's why it's all like lets you down all soft right at the okay. end. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So way cool. Yeah, yeah. Whenever we hit that at the end, it's just like. Completion. Uh. That's the final. Like we finally <laughs> went there. It like, felt. It felt like that too. I was like, yeah. I didn't. I didn't realize that. That maybe. I mean, maybe you know, subconsciously, I, I was like waiting for that note to come, and it never. You're did. right. They're musical yeah. magicians. Uh, it, That's a the chord is played. The chord illusion. is played during the B section. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. So that chord is played before it, but it it gets like breezed over. It's in a you know it's. I like it how it like does that. Yeah. So then any of you like uh, I'm hearing lots of music theory terms being thrown out here. How how like versed is the whole band in music theory? Chris Chris Hopefully is the me, most. I <laughs> um I I've learned everything that I know from Chris and a few guys from the nightcaps that I uh grew up with. Way but cool. uh it's honestly more of just like playing with people who are so much better than you are, <laughs> and you kind of just I, fumbling no, don't around. Don't yourself really down. Good. You you've got some skill there. Oh, thanks, you got man. some skill there. Thanks. My drum For set's sure. tuned in D major. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like yeah. trash. <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> so uh, I I can't pronounce the the name of your guys' last song. Can, can you say it again? Batuti. B two T. It's so spelled B two T, but we we say it Batuti. So Batuti, it's. B the number two and then T, because we were t- wait we were wait ta- wait B the number and then two. Yeah. The, B- <laughs> <laughs> so when we first started like coming up with songs and like the structure of them, like we were just talking like, all right, this is the A section. We're gonna do this four or eight times, and this is the B section, and then T always used to be turn around. So then we were just like, all right, we're gonna do the B twice, and then the turn around. So it was like B two T. Yeah, because this B B two T, and then I was just like, oh, that should be. The- and that's, that's how that's it, cool. how it, this is tea. It sounds like yeah. a drug. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Definitely I is in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully you we can did. facilitate oh, the drug. <laughs> I recommend it. Highly recommend it. Get your dose of BTT here. I mean, there, I mean, somewhere or anything in between. You sure the hell didn't get it here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Super cool. Hmm. Um, so you guys were talking about uh, the progression of the band and how you guys progress and you really like to see that like onward progression and it, it seems like you really want to like strive to like go to the next limit. Have you guys ever like considered vocalists in the band? We've considered totally, it. Totally, yeah. Yes. Uh, 
professor or anything or fourth member. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. Uh, you don't take me serious as a singer. That's what he's <laughs> I'm a serious singer. <laughs> that's awesome. I know personally I've been working on uh, vocals, um, but it's definitely a, a different step. I'm definitely super self-conscious about singing in front of people. Okay. And so it's never come to fruition. Um, there also is something to be said for like the, I do like the instrumental long weird yeah. shit that we do. That is kind of our sound, but some, sure. some, some vocals every now and again are kind of cool. Yeah. I don't think that maybe you guys could have a lead vocalist, but I think you guys could have a vocalist. That'd be, uh, that'd be cool. Right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. It's, it's, it's weird because like after, I don't know, the 20, 30 something songs that we've played, like trying to put vocals to it now is so weird. I, I don't think that you're looking for that kind of person that I'm envisioning. I mean, I, I guess I'm trying to see somebody that's like able to just go with the flow and be like, oh, yeah. yeah. Just like, <laughs> be like, tricycle. It's a but, uh, <laughs> are you just not able to play and sing or what's going on here? Uh, I, can I can definitely do it all. We need a PA yeah. and we need enough to mic my drums, get me a drum pad and need a synthesizer and a keyboarder. Super dope. Yeah. That'd be dang. We need and the, the chicken human needs a mic. Human so so you, well. you, you know, you think the keyboard before the singer? We're more, yeah, yeah. Or like a singing, if anyone listens to this and wants to rip some keys with us, a singing keyboardist. Yeah. Show us what you got. They're like unicorns. <laughs> That's some sick, sick yeah. right. to the band. Keyboardists are like unicorns in the Bozeman music scene. Do you like, know any unicorn oh calls? You can oh no, I, I totally, ways. I totally know unicorn. I cannot remember his name right off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> exactly. They, uh, played with, uh, <laughs> played with Legato. Uh, the, their band played with Legato. It was uh, uh, the Cats Bananas. And oh, yeah. I know exactly the older dude. Oh, dude, yeah. What's yeah, his he, name? Is it Mike? Uh, uh, I think it's yeah, Mike. Yeah, I think it's Mike. Uh, that dude rips. He's man, insane. he is like I remember that probably yeah, yeah. the most talented keyboard player I've seen in my life. Yeah. I was like, I was just in, in that. There's definitely some like impromptu he, on the fly stuff. And that guy was amazing. He'll put me out of a job, though. He was playing like bass with his left hand. <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, oh, could, I don't even I bet he could probably play bass with be better with his big toe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that guy's awesome. Anyways, uh, yeah, back to you guys. Uh, wh what, what do you guys see uh, coming in the, in the near future? Um, I know this probably won't be aired for, you know, about a month, but do you guys got anything in line? For, uh, yeah. Sometime after that. So we got some filler shows coming up. Uh, one of them is going to be probably before it airs, but uh, May third, we're opening up for the return of Moth, so that should be super cool. Oh, way cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those guys are coming back. Um, I haven't yeah. seen haven't seen them in a good minute, so that'll yeah. be super fun. And we've been like, we always thought that'd be kind of a cool pairing too, because cool. they kind of got like the electro jam band thing going on, which is yeah. sweet. And then we kind of got our like sort of jammy thing going on. I think I think it'll mix really nice. I think the Super crowds will mix cool. really nice. It'll be fun. Yeah. And, and then we got a also on Cinco de Mayo. Line. We are oh, yeah. throwing our first of I believe three little festivals at our property here. Super cool. And uh, I don't know. I kind of grew up on seeing music at festivals where everybody's partying, and having a good time. So that's what we're doing. We're having a bunch of people come over have a big potluck cookout and then we have our friends band the nightcap come the nightcaps coming and they're going nice. to be playing a set and then we're going to be playing a set we got a good sound system some lights coming and everybody's camping at the end so nobody's going to be driving messed up which is really good that, that's excellent yeah so and we're planning on doing that uh a few times this summer with pitch zach's thing too with uh <laughs> with uh, <laughs> a few other bands and uh as well as that our uh buddy zach is throwing something similar at his place but it's like a full day event with like we and we did it last year too yeah six or seven bands this is gonna be which, it's gonna be sick this is gonna yeah be fucking that's awesome. super cool it's gonna be like a big so, all day thing backyard tons bash. of bands backyard bash august yeah. 10th because that yes. one we yeah yeah and we're, <laughs> we're, we're all about the DIY, like... Super cool. Oh, Gallatin Underground is totally all about the DIY. Yeah. We are DIY. Yeah. yeah and, so we're th you know, yeah. like, uh, something that the audience members and you guys members may not know, but you guys can post stuff on our site. We've got a calendar. We're connected with Lotus Eaters. We're okay. trying to get more promoters 
uh, to link their calendars with ours so that we can get all of the shows on one central calendar. Yeah. And That'd so like, awesome. if you guys have events that aren't on there or the audience members do just like, uh, right at the bottom of the home page, there's a little spot you can submit a little thing. And at the bottom of your thing or the Lotus Eater thing uh, on the Gallatin Underground. Page, okay, nice. Gallatin yeah, I'll Underground definitely. Homepage. I actually and already do a bunch of like calendar updates for oh, super myself cool. and some other people. If, so yeah, if you I'll guys, just add that to my list to do. And, and if you're a promoter or, yeah. or have your own calendar of events and want it included, just hit me, hit us up, and and we'll 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 link it. That's so, good to know. <laughs> yep, yep. for sure. Yep, not just uh, not just you guys, but the audience members as well. So okay. yeah. keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. So man, you guys got a lot of, a lot of festivals and, and shows coming up. It sounds like you're well on your way to being like a, uh, you know, real band, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you got a, I got one more that we got a, uh, do you got a is it, was it July 13th? There's, a um, I think it's called like dead Floyd. It's like a dead, a uh, grateful dead pink Floyd. That's cool. Cover band. That should be announced officially by the time this is released. Yeah. yeah sure. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just realized, oh, it, cool. just realized <laughs> it hasn't been yet. <laughs> uh, releasing shows that they've been told. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, well, what's worse going to happen? Sneak but, uh, <laughs> Not because you won't hear it till it's released. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, we got that going on. Another opening gig at the filler. So we got, yeah. So May 3rd and then July, I think somewhere in the early July. Yeah. But you can cool. find us on our Instagram and Facebook. We got all our dates. And we also Sweet. got, like a, a monthly residency at the Murray in Livingston. They love us there. We have a fun, lot of fun yeah. there. Um, awesome. I don't know. <laughs> what, so, so what do, is it a set day? Like you guys play the 13th every month or no, is it a set day? we're still, uh, still talking to them about it. We're talking about like the third or fourth Saturday of the month, but I got to talk to my bandmates to make sure they're on. Not official. Because <laughs> yeah. cause I talk to them and then I talk to my bandmates also, to make sure it's all good. Also, we're going on tour? Like, what else are you fucking <laughs> <laughs> I got all, right, all these things get, booked, but they don't know that, about it. Let's talk about dates that are confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just... Like, I think all of us, we love to play music, we love to play out live, and we really get to hone our craft out live, so... We really hit the Bozeman scene super hard the last six months, playing once or twice a week in Bozeman because people would give us thirty dollars to do that. Sweet. <laughs> Which is like, well, like, yeah, we'll play. And it's not about the money. It's yeah. more about just getting yourself out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But Hey, have you have you guys ever considered playing Dylan? Uh Dylan Montana? Yeah. I don't know much about Dylan Montana. Um, Dylan, New Mexico. You would consider it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, if I was you guys, I would hit up the Moose Bar. They, Moose that was, Bar. Uh, yeah, nice. They, okay. they, uh, yeah, I got a hole. That's a great place to play. Dylan's a great town to play for. Okay. They're very receptive. It's uh, you know, kind of a college town, a lot of good downtown area. All, all the bars are okay. centralized. Everybody just kind of moseys from one to the other. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're it's trying to hit cool. all those spots. So Yeah. Definitely yeah. check that out if you guys haven't. Sounds like you've kind of spread around a little bit, but yeah, yeah, I got I got a little list I'm picking up of different like venues. So like, yeah, if you know any venues in little small towns in Montana and Idaho and Wyoming, cool. we want to go to all of them. Also, <laughs> any uh, little venues in small towns anywhere in uh, this Audible area, let us know. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll make sure that you can get found. Hell yeah, yeah. hell yeah, yeah, for sure. So you guys have anything lined up in terms of like recordings? Yes, we actually uh, did a. Uh, Live in the studio recording here, we where we actually like uh, separated the drums and the guitar and the uh, the bass. Yeah, it's pretty nice. sick actually. Oh, Nate's right. Nate's old rig was in his bedroom over well, here. No, my 15 was in my bedroom and the 4x10 was in the living room. Nice. All of Chris's rig was in the bathroom, and we <laughs> actually were all standing here with headphones on, like listening to each other, and we have like a. We got a little five. We got like it's gonna be like five songs, fifty-five minutes. Yeah, that's the that's about the runtime of the songs that we decided to keep. It's uh, it's pretty rough. It's pretty raw, like super, just like raw something, anything sound yeah. in this room. There's a little bit of like, like kind of like what we were talking about earlier. Is a little bit of just like bleed over stuff yeah. to well, and the bleed over is fine too because it can still get mixed a little sure. bit. And we wanted to kind of like have the natural space in it. Yeah. But we, you know, we did a little bit of like really light reverb things at certain things. Oh, certainly cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you want to give so it a good feel. It's like a live in the studio kind yeah. of deal. Yeah. The, the EP is called Sandwich Survival. It uh -huh. should be out soon. And it really was kind of the expression of like, if you come see us, this is what you're going to hear. Yeah, like, for sure. We're going to take chances. We're going to express ourselves musically. And sometimes it's going to work out. Sometimes it's gonna burn in a fiery flame but <laughs> yeah, definitely a double-edged sword man sometimes yeah. 
you play what you feel, you know, and sometimes you aren't always feeling it, but when you are, it's really great. And when you're not, man, you're still, yeah. still having a good time. Still yeah, playing music. Cool. Yeah, still playing yeah. music. Speaking of music, play you guys some... ready to play another song? Yeah. Yeah. Um, should we, you guys want to do CMF?
So it's kind of right. That was fucking hardcore. <laughs> it definitely sounds like a sea song, you know. You're like, oh yeah, kind of like piratey, you know. Is that that's like <laughs> you guys running? You want, you want so to that time? actually, if like, you do, if yeah. you had to like, like say for what you just played, like. Imagine, imagine that you have like a fucking infinite budget. You could produce a music video for that. <laughs> what does that music video look like? Oh, we talked about the um, third verse is called Blue Hole. It's, it's, a, pi- it's a pirate on the sea, man. Yeah, and his Chris, struggles. You, you wrote it. Let's see what, what do you well, do? first of all, Chris? I wrote this song a long ass time ago. And I was like a way different place in my life. And it's like, I don't really actually remember that much of that part of my life, but I remember that song. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Um, (laughs) and, uh, and, um, like, so I don't know, I guess if I had a million bits of budget, it would be like, I would do, it'd be like definitely on the sea or something. And then like, when it gets to that, we, there was like that one verse, which I tried to extend, which is what I was going like this about. And then like, uh, it's like, that's kind of the part where it's like, you're on, you're like in a storm on a boat and like everything's going wrong. And then like in that third verse is like where you're starting to like think about like home and stuff. Okay. Like first you're just straight adrenaline and you're just like going, you're like, we're going to like not die here today. You know what I mean? And then yeah. like by like verse three, you're like, I'm pretty sure we're going to die here today. <laughs> and then, you know what I mean? So then you're just like thinking about like, you know, like you're like remnant. That's what that part's like. It's a little slower and stuff. And it's okay. like more like sentimental. It's like, you're almost like taken out of the moment that you're in to like, have a flash of memory of like where you actually like your actual home and stuff. Like you got like a, you got a lady back home. And you're like, yeah. oh, I don't want to die. You know, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Way cool. <Yeah. laughs> that would be a cool video. Yeah, yeah. And then I don't know what that whole last bit is. That's like I don't know. The, what do you think? It's kind of like a resolution where it's just like uh, you kind yeah, of. At that point, you like found the last whiskey barrel on the boat, and you like everybody's getting down because fucking. <laughs> yeah, like the storm. Yeah, that's, maybe that's the storm pass, the and storm you're like pass. you're not home yet. Right, yeah, you're, you're like, not home but yet, I'm but you're like fucking way. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would this music video have like clips of you guys playing, or would it just be like really conceptual, like a indie movie? Oh, would definitely, you- there'd be clips of us playing where. Chris Chris is like, we gotta keep on going. We gotta keep on going. And I'm, I'm over like, here being like, why is the rum gone? Why is the rum? And then we find the rum at the very end. And that's what that last verse is about. Yeah, that's cool. So like, what if it was like a, a little like cutout of like the waves, paper waves, and they're like sliding back and I forth. I like that. And you guys Monty were like Python paper style. characters <laughs> fighting it with each other. I like that. Like, that ass. Yeah. That's funny that, that that's how it would fit into the infinite budget scenario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like $100 bill. <laughs> uh, I just thought it'd be a cool idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I, I love it, dude. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> that one's actually, we could actually do that. Uh, I'm, I'm stoked to watch it if you guys do. <laughs> um, fucking, so I... You guys just are so very talented. I just wonder where you draw your influences from. Let's. Well, uh, Do you want me to start? Uh. So it kind of breaks out. We're all different, first of all. Absolutely. Uh, and that's what I think makes I think, us kind of tick is that we got so many different influences going on between all of us, and we kind of find a common ground. I think we initially should probably like thank like the jam band scene in general. Because like our our direct influences would probably be like. Is it Grateful Dead? Because I see two posters. Grateful Dead <laughs> is like, yeah, definitely just an influencer on American music for sure. Absolutely, and yeah. definitely a part of like, definitely like the the sprout of like what started the scene that became like what we are. You know what I mean? But I mean, it's not that direct of theirs. Like we definitely like them and like to like. There's certain moments where I definitely draw from them, but then there's. Like, I mean, even past that, things like the Disco Biscuits and Fish and uh, Papadocio, Umphrey yeah. McGee, Where? all that later stuff. Talk. Yeah. Talk. Um, Docio. Where, obviously, our influence by the Grateful Dead, and without the Grateful Dead, there would be no none of those bands. Sure. But they kind of propel the genre that we see a lot and that we enjoy and kind of got us mm-hmm. into music. But even beyond that, I think... For me, I shouldn't speak for these guys, but I grew up metalhead. I really like Les Claypool, Primus, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Flea was why I picked up a bass. Um, the funk, the really driving stuff. Nice. But then 
besides that, I mean, I like classic rock. I love the Beatles. I love Pink Floyd. I love Floyd's a big one for me as well. Yeah, cool. I love the slow rising jams, really peaky, beautiful stuff. And I mean, it's that that's completely different than like Primus and Let's Play Pool and Flea from like the straight in your face funk from. So I don't know. It's for me, it's a lot of different influences. Um, ha, have you of, uh, have you heard of the the Sean Len- Lennon thing that uh, oh, Les think, Claypool's doing? I'm gonna try to go yeah, to that this so, summer uh, at the Kettle House. It's a, it's a summer at the Kettle House. Yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've actually uh, seen Primus the last two times at the Kettle House, and I'll be back at the Kettle House with Les Claypool. And, cool. Uh, I got my tickets. Sick. We should yeah. meet up. <laughs> yeah. And also, Jim James is playing, yeah, yeah, and I sure. love yeah, my morning jack- jacket, so that should be a great time. Um, cool. But, yeah, he's definitely a big hero of mine, and I really like what they've been doing. I've been listening to uh, the Clinton Laypool Delirium, and they yeah. kind of put on, like, rock operas. It's really cool. Yeah. It's really psychedelic. really, like... I, I, I'd never heard of it before uh, a few months ago. My buddy... My buddy Jared uh, kind of mentioned it to me uh, sometime not very long ago, but I uh, I, I kind of just like you know in in one year out the other type thing. Yeah. And uh, then I, I checked out their music video after I seen the the. Oh you know, God, Primus that music coming. video tripped me the fuck like, out, fuck dude. Me, it was so cool, weird. You know. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean. I don't know if anybody else is super stoked about it, but I am. Oh, the occult. I'll, I'll be there. I'm really excited. They got a incredible keyboardist behind them. He's a cool. he's a fucking wizard, and <laughs> so it should be a great show overall. And yeah, what are your influences? Uh, yeah, I um I didn't really get into the whole jam band scene until I met these cats. So I'm like I'm pretty fresh to this whole thing, and um. You know, two bands in in uh, particular that stood out to me has been uh, Papadocio and Talk. Um, nice. Yeah, Papadocio is is uh, is um, definitely one of my favorite bands, and they, I mean, more than just uh, the music itself, but they bring it into like a full encompassing uh, thing here with like their message and their fans and everybody, and the the whole energy and the vibe of the music's is uh so good in the way that it moves me and everything like that so they definitely opened my eyes to to a little bit of a new scene and i've i've definitely fully embraced it and uh that's kind of been what i've been listening to and what i've been feeling ever since they they showed me you know so uh shout out to these guys uh chris and uh nate yeah changed my life and changed how i saw music and uh man you know just uh it's what i love now it's it's my life. They showed me something that was was, was inside me that I hadn't uh, tapped into before. So I appreciate that. And that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. that's really cool. Hell yeah! Fuck yeah! That was so sweet. Fucking <laughs> red. Um, I guess my influences are really across the board, and I think I draw from a lot of influences um, that are way outside of uh, <clears throat> like jam bands or even like bands in general, like. Like, I definitely, in the early sense of it, I really like to listen to dudes like Jimi Hendrix and Steve Ray Vaughan and stuff and try to emulate that a little bit in my guitar playing. And then, uh, but that even stretches to, like, uh, I really like the guitars from Krungbin. Have you guys heard them before? Mm-mm. They're sweet. It's kind of like a new kind of band that's influenced by, like, old Thai funk. Like, in Southeast Asia, there's like, a funk scene that was going oh, really? on. Like I when funk, but it has, like, an oriental sound to it? Exactly, yeah. Wow. So there's, like, little huh. scales and, like, tidbits of, like, an oriental sound. In before somebody turns that into Vaporwave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I'm sure it's It's a it's trio of, on, of drums, bass, and guitar, yeah. so it's really, like... That's cool. I definitely love that guy's guitar playing because it's, like, got some, like, weird stuff going on. But, like, and th- like there's, like, rhythmic things I do that I'll, I'll be, like, thinking about, like... A specific like hip hop song in my head, and okay. I'll like I'll think about like the flow of a lyricist, and I'll try to like mimic the rhythm because that's like the I, I grew up on like so many different kinds of music that like when I'm actually thinking about the rhythms that I'm playing specifically and the notes too, I'm like I'm thinking about things that are much far they're like, way beyond rock and roll or jam band or anything. I'm thinking about like hip hop and R and B and like country and like it really? all is like going through my head you know what i mean and then it filters through like whatever i am and it just kind of comes out how it comes out <laughs> that's incredible i <laughs> yeah. never would have thought it was i like, like sometimes like hear like lyrics of like 
rappers like in my head when I play guitar and stuff. But then oh. I'm also like hearing huh. like Jimi Hendrix or like Trey Anastasio or something. Not and trying like, to imagine your music with a rapper. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm just trying. We'd have to, we'd have to hold check back. Check out Still that. Gone. Yeah, 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 for sure. Check out Still Gone. Yeah, my other band, Still Gone, has a rapper in it, so that's okay. pretty cool. So, cool. Pretty cool. I got a question. Uh, fucking for the whole band. What's just more important, rhythm or melody? Oh, that's Equally a big old important. equal. Equal. <laughs> Definitely equal. Maybe rhythm. No, you have to yeah, pick two one. two parts to no. music, man. I'll rhythm take, and melody, rhythm. and you don't have music without the either of them. You know? What about the beat, yo? I pick, I actually, if I got to choose one, <laughs> I actually pick, I pick the beat. <laughs> well, yeah, I pick the beat. That's the most important. Because right. we could be drum circling and like all out of tune and shit. And oh, so fine. you're like not down with What are you trying like to say? My drums aren't tuned to D <laughs> major, bro? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think it's D minor. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they're a little sad sounding because I hit them so fucking hard. All right. Can, can I say something? Oh, yeah. 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 I, I think what something and the anything is is kind of a reaction to each other. And I think that's kind of what makes this tick because there are times when I'm listening to like straight blues and then Chris will come over and he's got this hip hop funky little beat going and then Justin comes on with like a jazzy drum and I'm just going over it and that's like it becomes a new song. Mm -hmm. So yeah. really like I think it's just all of our influences and what we're kind of listening to kind of meld into one, which is kind of what makes us. Yeah. That's really It's kind cool. of all in the name. Something in the anything. Yeah. It yeah. could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was going to ask how your name came about, but I think it's pretty apparent. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's actually a, there's an origin, actually. a, a Let's story it. about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it's actually, it's actually, it seems kind of obvious that it's through indecisiveness that we came to that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, that kinda, I thought it was just kind of something you guys were like, oh, this kind of sounds like trendy or something. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And so, like, that's the name of one of my songs. We actually something like that because you know, same it thing. Goes right? a little something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Uh, we had like come like we were thinking about a couple different names. Sandwich Survival, our uh, the name of our album was actually a name I pitched for our band. Nice. <laughs> um, and then uh, Pocket Sandwich. Pocket Sandwich. We Pocket actually played sandwich. our first show as One Kick Ninja. Yep. <laughs> cool. Our first open mic. Yeah, we had like big fucking because the thing was is like our first show was at Red Tractor literally a year and a month ago. When he said that, that's pretty almost to the date, you know. Cool. And we were like, fuck, we got to finalize a band name before then. So we'd have these big fucking sessions after band practice. And we'd just like sit here and brainstorm names. And I was just like, oh, just over and over yelling at Chris these fucking band names that were like, blah, da, da, in the blah, da, da, blah, da, 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 da. A lot of and those. Like, yeah, 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 that, and that fucking yeah. Um, format. That, that format. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like. Something in the pythons or grass in the blue sky or fucking rubber chicken in the whoop de doo And he was like, oh, dude, we should change I don't want to. That. <laughs> that is pretty sick. Rubber chicken in the whoop de doo yeah. That's right. We're going to change our name right here. Yeah, but he was, Chris was like, fucking, I don't want to be something and the anything, dude. And I was like, you fucking sure about that? <laughs> and he was like, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. So I originally said like, I didn't want to be that's that. That's awesome, I don't want to be something in the anything. You have all these bands. But you're not. Like, you guys are something more than the anything. We're fucking yeah. rubber chicken in the whoop de doo yeah. <laughs> Well, you have all these, all these Bozeman bands that are like, you got Lady Lou and the Bird Dogs, Paige and the People's Band. It's like blank and the blank. Yeah, okay. you know it's and and, and we now kinda, we're one of those too. And, and we yeah, right. <laughs> assholes. <laughs> they sick bands. We're not saying anything. Oh, no, 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 not that's no, no, the other bands. I just told oh, you to like be absolutely to be not like that. We're just like. <laughs> and, and there was this no, so uh, you know we're talking about bands at the moment, so. Who are some of the um, local bands? I know you guys mentioned the Nightcaps, and you guys are going to be playing with Moth. But uh, who are some of the local bands that you guys look up to and, and uh, like to uh, go out and see and, and support? I like to see uh... Bear Spray. Bear Spray Krimbo. Carl is one of my favorite local bass players, I got to say. And they bring a intensity to their music, and it kind of draws the crowd. And it's just... It's intense music. I love it. That's cool. Like it's heavy, it's melodic, and yeah, just everybody's ready to get down. Nice. I don't know. I I love bear spray. Big shout out to the Dusty Pockets. Those dudes fucking rip. Fuck yeah. Um, definitely the Nightcaps, our buddies. Uh, they're like starting to sound real awesome, and we're like every time I see them, it's even better. So 
definitely see the nightcaps if you Way get a chance cool. uh good clean funk is a sweet like fusion three-piece like funk band those guys are amazing and like young dudes and they're all just like just rippers it's pretty unbelievable <laughs> all uh, schooled musicians yeah, who so like know what they're doing <laughs> yeah they're really good it's pretty insane it's pretty uh, crazy how <laughs> many musicians bozeman has oh, yeah. and, and just aren't even heard or recognized. yeah this podcast will never finish <laughs> no Perma yeah. honestly like <laughs> permafunk's killer permafunk is killer but um, honestly there are bands who have not seen the airtime or the shows that are fucking ripping like bozeman is like killing it with the local music scene and you just got to go out and see it you really like, do you there really are happy. so many venues in bozeman that'll host local bands you just got to go out yeah just I mean, go out and see it zebra all right. Oh, Press F to pay respects. <laughs> oh wait, he's not dead yet. Should we like be throwing the dirt on already? Or... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, uh, yeah. I got. I'm gonna pitch my other band since we're talking yeah, about yeah, bands here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can yes, I pitch my uh, other band too? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, let's hear Still, about your other bands. Uh, I'm in a. I'm in a band called Still Gone, and we do like kind of like a soul funk, hip hop uh thing there's occasional little bit of like reggae beats in there too but it's pretty cool it's got like uh singing rapping a bunch of guitar and keys and bass and stuff and uh yeah i think we got we're gonna play like i forget what the date is but it's the last friday that the zebra is gonna be open so that one will be cool super killer we might uh, have a couple sit-ins on that you'll probably have a really good draw i'm sure because... oh yeah yeah we're gonna have some cool sit-ins i think that i'll be there for sure I'm excited about yeah, i hope so yeah <laughs> i don't know if i want to watch these guys without you it's, <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> it's a fun outlet they uh they let me they let me uh rip solos still but not nice. in, but there's a lot more like uh different like chord and accompaniment i'm doing okay so it's a good way to if you like watching me with this band it's cool like different yeah. facet yeah, to, of my personality yeah, like yeah a different side of your creativity yeah and but I gotta say, they practiced here for the first time ever uh, on Monday, Tuesday. I forget what day it was, but yeah, we, it we practiced was a few days ago, and cool. like, you're not gonna want to miss it. Like, <laughs> melodic, cool. you, the bass player's <laughs> insane. They got a new drummer who really rips it. Like, well, well we, their guitar player's there. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, you guys are fucking sick, man. Yeah. I love the whole thing. Like, oh. way cool. Well, yeah. What about your musical project? Okay, so. Justin and I is, uh, or Justin and me, what is the proper term? I don't really know. Justin and I. Uh, Justin and I. Yes. Uh, Grammar. <laughs> we just uh, joined a great uh, singer, songwriter, guitar player. His name's Harley Larson, and cool. he is in Sundance in the Wilds. So Sweet. he is Sundance. I guess we are the Wilds, and we've played a few shows with him. It's... It's a lot of fun. I mean, he's got a lot of really interesting rhythm, which is why I dig it. And it takes a little bit to kind of like take in, like at least for me musically to like realize what he's doing. It kind of like I, I, it. Maybe it's just something different than what you're used to. I mean, exactly. You know, it seems like you guys have a real uh, solid groove. You guys have like a sort of solid vision on like what what you guys have yeah. together. And so I think when you invite somebody that's different or especially a different style even as it's your own interest you kind of like get thrown out of whack a little bit you know oh, absolutely and we've been working through it it's really funny because justin and i i have this like chemistry together where like he knows where i'm gonna go and i know where he's gonna go so we can kind of read each other right. and like we just fit together from years of playing together sure. And Harley's trying to fit in, and he's doing a great job. Like he's a great guitar player, and he's a great vocalist. Right. And that's what I kind of dig about it. It's it's different. There's a lot of structure to it, and right. It's definitely growing me, or I'm growing as a musician playing his music, and it's I, a lot of fun. I, I think it's something to remember for every everyone is that you know you never you never stop growing as a musician. Absolutely I mean, not. You, you might think that you're really good at one style of music or one particular thing, or maybe you've played your six set song a hundred times and you know, you could probably nail it every time, but you know, maybe you can, maybe you can't. It's always going to be the moment where you're like, wait, I've been doing this wrong the entire time. Right? <laughs> that, you know, that fucking innovation you find. Right. I like, mean, even for personal experience, you know, I mean, I've, I've played songs of mine, uh, and I, you know, like I said, you do cell phone recordings or whatever. And, and, you know, you listen to them like two, three years later after playing that song and you're like, 
God, I sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but you, it's it's nice to see the progression again because it makes you feel accomplished. Like yeah. you've gone somewhere, you've d- done something that has improved you, and and hopefully been able to draw an audience or let them feel whatever you're trying to push out to to your audience. You know, and and I think that's important. And that's absolutely right because I remember years ago when I played my first open mic with Justin and our other guitar player. And I like, it was garbage. It was shit. (laughs) But did you, did you still have somebody like listening (laughs) to you in the crowd and like totally still getting down? I had somebody taking apart my drum set. I was, I was playing it because we played over the time. (laughs) Yeah. Don't, don't tell yourself your shit. I mean, I I, I understand that feeling. Trust me. I've been there and, and, and understand that feeling. And, and, and at that time, and, you know, maybe it was just a horrible show, but there was somebody that was enjoying it. Yeah. Somebody was. Maybe not like the 40 people that left, but <laughs> somebody was. It's, it's, it's all an evolution because I'm sure in a few years when I look back at like a Something in the Anything show that we played and I'm just like, oh my God, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I, like even, even a show that we had a recording last summer that I've listened to recently and then I'm just like, oh, it goes back to the archival comment, dude, I made in the beginning. It's not about being good. It's about the progression. Exactly. It's about right. preserving that and growing a, as a musician yeah, and about, about having fun. Yeah, and about, about releasing feeling, the energy you know? that's inside of you that you need to get out. Exactly. Like, we all do like, it because we all it's connect. It's self-expression. So like, even if it sucks, you're still getting something out of you. You know what I mean? It is like, exactly. Every, every, performance, yeah. every performance is like worth it. Even if you mess up, it's Absolutely. like every single time you and do there's it, nuggets 100% and everything. worth it and everything's yeah. good. And that's what I'm saying, like, even though I'm saying like those performances sucked, like there oh, are yeah. moments where I'm just like, wow, yeah, that was right, like good right, right, right there. Meaning like that <laughs> 20 seconds was like great. One of the biggest barriers is, is actually just pushing yourself to the point where you can actually get on stage, whether it's singing or playing or a combination of the two. It, it takes a lot of willpower to like be like, yeah, I'm going to go stand in front of like 10 people and try to do something I've never done before. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully the crowd is, is receptive and, and you get a little bit of sense of accomplishment for pushing yourself out there to, to, to get you to draw it to that next level and, and be something that you guys are today. You know, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm a musician and I've been playing for 15 years, but you guys are all more talented than I am. And, and, and I'm not trying to like beat myself down, but I, nobody should, nobody should sit there and, and think that they're the best or they're they're the worst. They should always look up to somebody and strive to be better. And they should always like, uh, look up to the people that are trying and aren't quite to the level that they're at, because it's, it's hard to, it's hard to progress as a musician if, if you don't have supporters. And I, I think that's one of the things that we're really about is, is supporting and we really want everybody's voice to be heard. So you know, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. It's definitely a community of musicians in this town and Absolutely. we all like go out and see each other's shows and stuff. And it's like oh, yeah. super positive and, and we appreciate awesome. it. There's yeah, a lot of things really I admire do. about a lot of different people that aren't necessarily like a technical skill or their ability level, but sometimes I admire someone's work ethic with the amount of time that they put into what or, they do, the fact that they even just put themselves out there. Like if they're, you know what I mean? Yeah, there, there's so much respect I have for like anyone who's out there playing music, like a number you, one fan. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Like, so. Oh, do you, you know, guys have a number one fan? Speaking of, we might. I don't know. We got a, we got we got some people. You we got have friends of ours who like us a lot. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. yeah. Right. Any yeah. shout outs you'd like to give out? Yeah. Nightcaps. They're really sick. You should check them out. <laughs> yeah, they come to. They got like their third. What, what about like, like they got uh, their third shout out? <laughs> you know, do you, do you guys uh, you guys support the the local music businesses and and stuff like oh, that? Absolutely. Or? I absolutely. mean, it's a big web. You know what I yeah. mean? Like you go out and you support your friends and your support your friends support you and then like you said you know then you get that acceptance and you get your friends that'll tell you like they'll be honest with you you know what i mean but at the same time you're just all like making paintings together really and like everybody's collabing with everybody else and like you're finding new sounds and even if you're not like playing out you're still like playing with your group of friends in that web and then like everybody grows together you know what i mean and and the music community like we had spoken about before and this podcast is amazing here you know what i mean and and everybody's really pushing each other to get better. And everybody does come out and support. Like, I know I work, you know, a, a labor job in construction and stuff like that. And I get tired and everything. And then, you know, everybody else too. But at the end of the day, 
when you come home, you got to make that decision. Like, do I want to sit on the couch and eat potato chips or do I want to go support my friends? You know what I mean? Yeah. And and yeah. we got everybody here is doing <laughs> that yeah. for each other and everybody's growing and everybody's got that mindset and it's beautiful. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, I appreciate I that. And so. I got to say, we wouldn't be anything without our friends support right now all of those local bands out there that come out at fucking 11 30 at night when they got work at seven or eight in the morning and come support us that's and awesome. that's what drives us to like do the same for them like we love local music we love like what this community that bozeman has created and that's what we're all about that's super awesome well, uh, real quick uh, thing here is uh, any of the other bands that, that are out there and listening, just, uh, you know, there's a little place on the bottom of our homepage. Just scroll down. Uh, you want to be on the show? Let us know. You got an idea. You, you're a comedian. You're an artist. Uh, you know, whatever. We want to we want to we want to get you out there. So, you know, don't don't feel shy. We're here to listen. So and uh hopefully people will listen to you and we're always oh, yeah. looking for fucking volunteers like oh, absolutely. people who want to help out with what we're doing because yeah. like yeah, you got a great we idea. really you believe be in this cause we want to fucking oh, promote yeah. our local musicians if we're doing something wrong and you got a better idea yeah bring it on yeah, we, we yeah. Want let it. us know we're how all badly grow we together. fucked up yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're all sharing like a piece of ourselves and it's great when other people share that as well so yeah Let's hear one more song, guys. Yeah, yeah. let's let's wrap it up. Uh, then we fit ahead what are, out. What are you guys? What are you guys thinking about playing for this last song here? We're gonna play a song. Which biscuit or primo? Oh, I definitely don't want to do primo. I thought we were. Gonna, I thought we were gonna do. I thought we were gonna do Sarah's serenade oh, for a second. Gonna, okay, whatever you guys want to do. <laughs> you want to do which biscuit into Sarah's serenade? Yeah. Why don't you guys do which one back biscuit? To back? Yeah, yeah. So we'll do. Let's do. Uh, we're gonna Fuck do it. which let's biscuit into Sarah's the, serenade. I, I know you guys play long songs, but like, yeah, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude. <laughs> there are so many like transitions and sound there. I'm like, <laughs> wow. Like, okay, like, that last part was so doomy off. and intense. Oh, I loved fuck. it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a great ending. What a great ending to the show. I don't know if you guys like planned that out or something. <laughs> Fuck, what a great ending. All of us just would, the whole every time we discussed it, it was all part of an act. Oh, <laughs> you fooled me. We're like, I don't even want to play I, that one. I had no clue. That was so great. Yeah, so, wow. The size of it. So, showsmanship. We've never done that transition before, but that was Witch Biscuit into Sarah Serenade. Two of our newer tunes. Sarah yeah, yeah. Serenade. Witch biscuit to Sarah Serenade. Yeah. Correct. Nice. Cool. Why don't you uh, Why don't you explain the whole meaning behind those uh, song names, Chris? <laughs> yeah. All right, so the names that. are relatively arbitrary, but I got the the idea from I was uh, I was uh, trimming some weed and I was listening to a podcast about the Salem witch trials, and like I guess there was a doctor that like this is like before they like were like they're cursed like maybe they're sick with something and they uh, got these like possessed chicks to like pee into this pail and then they made like biscuits out of it with like flour and stuff and then they they cooked those biscuits and then they fed them to the family dog and that was supposed to get the girl like unsick and cursed and stuff so that's what witch biscuit is (laughs) and they even called it a witch biscuit in the fucking podcast So that's a witch biscuit, and then Sarah Serenade. That's like, uh, what was this? It's like Sarah. Something. Yeah, Sarah Good. Sarah Good. Yeah, that like, was her name. She's like the first one that was convicted in the Salem witch trial. So that's like, I don't know. That's like her curse. Is like that wow, fucking evil we part. Match these songs together. That seems like pretty. Good. No, it seems like it's a perfect match. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. like it's so it's so deep and dark when you like tell the story. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't yeah, yeah. like expecting that, but like, yeah, you like starts out and you're like. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't. Sarah's don't. having fun tripping. Yeah. And then, <laughs> now, all of a sudden, you're convicted. You're on the cross. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Like she, oh, going we're going to burn for life. Oh, What's going to happen? Ate some bad bread, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that old thing. With Who hasn't, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I've never, I've never, I've never had any like that. That piss bread, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Gross. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Teach his own or her own or whatever. Uh, so yeah, this was uh, the something in the anything. <laughs>